Good evening, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 54. I apologize for the slight late start. I had a little bit of a technical uh, glitch there. Couldn't get <clears throat> Facebook to connect to my OBS studio, but uh, we're all ready to go now. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, and I uh, want to give a special thank you to, gosh, the 500 or more of you, you that shared our post on Friday. Um, I think that's the most shares we've ever had. Um, put a little post out trying to um, help us break the 9,000 follower threshold um, on Facebook and put a little carrot out there um, that if you shared, you'd get in a drawing for 500 bucks off a set of CSI shocks and certainly didn't expect that much love from the CSI family. So um, certainly appreciate that. We'll gather all those names, and uh, since so many people shared it, we'll do um, the 500 bucks off a set, and then we'll do a bunch more gifts as well. So more pe more than one person will win, and um, we'll either do that later this week or do the drawing Monday. But we'll let you know when we're going to do that. Tonight's topic is the relationship between springs tor and torsion bars uh, with the shock. So if you have a, a torsion bar car how the shock and the torsion bar work in harmony. And the same thing with the spring. I believe there's a, a little bit of misconception there. And um, as we go through these, we're on episode 54, and I'm always thinking, what can we do um, to bring more value to you guys? And, and what questions do we need to answer? And so I'm always taking mental notes and notes in my phone of how that might be a good episode and something to go back to. Um, because I do this for you guys and to try to share my... 20 plus years of knowledge and all the knowledge I've gained from the super bright people that I've worked for throughout my career. Um, so if there's ever a topic that you want, you can either comment um, below, shoot me a message, uh, an email, a Facebook message, whatever. I'm always looking for additional topics for Monday Morning Quarterback. So as I was thinking about the best way to demonstrate this for you guys, um, over the weekend, decided we'd put together a little video. Um, so Sam filmed a video uh, of me this morning um, with our Gale Force machine. And uh, so we will go to that and then come back and I'll answer any questions you have based on um, what you saw there in the video and uh, anything else that's came up in your race program so far this season. Hopefully you've got on the track. But uh, without further ado, here is the video. How's it going, everybody? Today we're going to demonstrate the difference between a shock and a spring. We've got um, several questions here the last few weeks, and so I dug our uh, Gale Force machine out that we used when we were designing our quarter midget um, bump system. Um, great tool for that. Um, but basically what I'm going to show you today is that a shock doesn't generate any force through displacement. It only does it through velocity. So um, in that, it's, it's like a dynamic spring. So the shock's main function is to absorb and dissipate the energy, um, and the tire does a little bit of that as well, but the shock is the main um, function of that in the race car. And so a shock's going to control uh, pitch and heave, um, roll, those kind of things, where a spring or a torsion bar, um, as it's compressed or wound up, it builds rate um, linear, progressive, depending on the design. Um, where a shock, it doesn't build rate through displacement, only through velocity. So what I'm going to show you here is you can see we've zeroed the machine out. There is no rate currently, and we're simply going to travel this uh, quarter midget shock, and it could be any type of shock, but we're going to travel it one inch, and it's only going to build whatever the rod pressure is in the shock, so a pound or two, um, basically. And we'll travel it an inch. So we got it one inch and it's still zero pounds. So um, this is our new JR4 shock um, that, that's not available yet, but we've taken great strides to get rid of rock pressure, um, seal drag, etc. So this one's really, really low. If you had a gas charge shock, depending on how much gas pressure you had in it, there could be some stored rod pressure and this number might be two, three pounds. But as you can see, it didn't, even though this shock is, um, 20 some odd pounds at three inches per second of velocity, it doesn't build rate as it compresses. Um, so what we're gonna do now is put a, um, and what I mean by that is, so as the shock 
speeds up and slows down, it generates force. But if you just compress it and leave it, it's not pushing the shaft back out. There's no rod pressure. It doesn't create force that way. But what we'll do is we'll put a 100-pound hypercoil spring on, and we will set the preload to zero. We'll just screw this. We'll get it to where it creates maybe one pound of force. Got about a pound of force on it right there. <clears throat> and now we'll travel this an inch. And you'll see that it's going to generate right around 100 pounds of force. And that's all spring. None of it is shock. So with the progressive nature of the hypercoil, it's actually built a little more than 100. Um, if we back it off a half of an inch, um, 69 or so. Not super accurate with the uh, steel rule that Gale Force provides here. Um, but you can see, as we traveled that, the more we travel it, the more rate it builds. If we were to go the other way and just keep, keep traveling it, the more we travel it, the higher that number is going to get, right? We'll travel it almost two inches, which is a darn near max travel on a quarter midget. And now we got 220 pounds of rate. None of that's coming from the shock. That's all coming from the spring. So why I wanted to give you this demonstration is it's important to realize that the shock and the spring or torsion bar, their jobs are two different things on the race car. Um, we've gotten some questions recently that, hey, my shock's only 100 pounds of force and my spring is 200. That doesn't seem right to me. Um, they do two different things, okay? The, the spring and the torsion bar is going to hold that corner up. Um, it it's basically has a specific static load for that corner where the shock is going to control pitch, heat, roll. So it's going to control how the car moves through the corner. A, a shock's more of a timing device. Um, so hope all that makes sense to you. We'll come back and answer your questions. Um, and thank you for watching. All right. So as you can see, the shock works like a dynamic spring. It doesn't generate force with displacement. It does it with velocity. The exception to that would be high gas pressure shocks. Um, our dirt modified application where we're running a lot of gas pressure and trying to build spring rate into the shock. Um, we typically will run a higher gas pressure on the right rear um, in rough track conditions. Again, we're trying to add a little bit of spring rate, get the shock to react quicker. Um, but for the most part, the shock is a timing device, and that's the best analogy I can give you. So it's going to time side-to-side -side movement, front-to-back movement, diagonal movement of the car. So if a shock has a lot of rebound in the left rear, it's going to slow the weight transfer to the right front and right rear. Uh, conversely, if a shock has a very stiff right front compression, it's not going to travel as fast to the right front because it wants to hold that corner up. Um, and then the shock can only do so many things. It's designed within a certain parameter, so it's not going to make up for a huge setup deficiency in your race car. If you go on a hooked up heavy track and you have six pounds of air in the right rear where you probably should have had ten, just to throw numbers out there, and the car is bouncing, that sidewall of your tire is not stiff enough and there's um, you're getting a lot of oscillation there. So we're not holding that corner up um, adequately and the shock just can't make up for that difference. So you might see a car going around the track and think like, wow, that, you know, that thing's, the shock's bad on the right rear when it could just be low air pressure or too soft of a torsion bar or spring. So um, the shock can only do so much because it's not designed for um, to compensate for setup deficiency. So I will come over here and check out and see what questions you guys have come up with. I appreciate Kevin. He's already chimed in and told let everybody know we don't have iOS yet. Um, the good news is we have been in communication with them back and forth, so we're not just radio silence sitting on our hands kind of like we were for a few weeks there. So we have communication back and forth and the ball's still rolling and we're full speed ahead on that and uh, we hope to be able to get you guys an update maybe by next week. Um, but we're still still plugging along on that. It's taken a lot longer than 
than uh, any of you would have liked, and certainly longer than Kevin would have liked. He's dedicated a lot of his time to to getting that done. But speaking of pit logic, um, we have a few of you guys that have started using the Junior Sprint template and uh, have made some feedback on that. So Kevin's working on those updates. We should have those probably by the end of the week. Um, so we'll have template updates for the Junior Sprint, um, a 219 gear chain chart for that. Um, I've also updated our website with a couple more setups. I got a Mini Indy setup on there, a Kalamazoo setup for quarter midgets. We got Joe's baseline junior sprint setup on there as well. So, um, we're, we're going to keep adding setups as the season progresses to Pit Logic. So, if there's anything you want to see Pit Logic have, um, let us know because it was created for you guys. So, thank you guys for all tuning in. Uh, Ethan, can I use Pit Logic on my? I'm assuming you mean phone and tablet at the same time. You may. So as long as those two devices have the same Google account, uh, it'll work on both. So we have several tablets here in the shop that um, we pay one subscription for. Yes, we have to pay for a subscription too, uh, that we pay for one subscription for, and uh, it's all just on the same Google account. Um, none of us have an Android phone here. We would have it on our phone as well. So we are eagerly, eagerly waiting for iOS. Um, so yeah, you, if you have the same Google account, and I believe it'll be the same with Apple, if you have the same account, it'll work uh, on both. So anybody that's tuned in have questions um, based on the video that we just saw um, or any other questions as racing is getting rolling here. Uh, Daniel, can I explain why we would add gas pressure to uh, the right rear shock? So this was a, a midget question, but it would pertain to most any application that we do. We would add gas pressure to, um, basically it's adding some spring rate to the shock and it's allowing the shock to react quicker. So it's going to feel like it has more compression, less rebound. We're going to do that in instances where we have plenty of grip, but we're trying to add more stability and control to the right rear corner. So fast, tacky tracks, often we see them in the spring. Um, what we're doing is a fine adjustment. It's not anything equivalent to a full bar size change or anything like that. If you're getting too much travel um, and you're just under sprung on that corner, you need to do that with a, a spring or a torsion bar change and not gas pressure and a shock. Mark, this is an age-old debate. Um, he's asking about gear ratio and larger engine gear versus smaller engine gear. Um, and this is a quarter midget question. You know, I've talked to several engine builders about it, and I don't think there's a big enough swing there in difference um, for there to be a measurable change. Um, I run belt drive stuff, and we run the same engine gear all the time, and we just change our axle gear. So it's not something I've ever experimented or tested with. But um, the people that I know have, haven't seen a difference. So, Mike Elliott, how much? Uh, I assume you're referring to pit logic. If you're not, uh, comment. Um, pit logic is $9.99 a month for the base package, and that includes everything with the app and downloadable setups that we give you. The next level is $19.99, and we manage all your shock content on there. And then $29.99 is kind of the, the gold level, and we analyze setups for you. Um, on the gold level. So, but 999 gets you everything you need for the app, saving setups, and all of the downloadable stuff from us. <clears throat> uh, KC and Rose Cox, how do you find setups on the library? Well, give me one second and I will show you if I can get the internet to work. Go to csishocks.com. Scroll down to Pit Logic, and here are all the codes. So you, you don't do it in the app, you just need this code. So if you wanted the Stanley Light World Formula Daytona setup, you, you're just going to type in QM 2019-007 in the um, upload or uh, excuse me download part of the setup and it'll pull that setup in for you. So you see we have some quarter midget setups, micro, junior sprint, um, dirt midget, and we're adding setups all the time. So that is how you find the, uh, the setups. 
Mark had already answered your question. Sorry, I hadn't got down that far. Cool. Anybody else that's tuned in have questions, let us know. We um, kicked off our iRacing League last week, and uh, something we're excited about. It's just uh, fun to get our customers um, from all over the country participating in something during the week. Uh, Aiden Purdue, a micro racer from Illinois, won round one last week, which, what, excuse me, which was midgets at Lima Land. This Wednesday, we got Wing 360 Sprint Cars at Kokomo. Um, so we have 116 people applied. We reduced it down to 50 true CSI customers that are iRacers. And um, this is live every week. Um, so you can look for a link on our Facebook page. It'll be on our YouTube channel. We had a couple glitches last week with opening week, but um, I think we got all those ironed out. So we're, uh, we're excited about about that we have uh, over five thousand dollars in cash and prizes weekly and for the championship thanks to um, a lot of our partners that we do business with and customers um, dealers of ours who donated stuff so we're super excited about that um, if you didn't get into the iRacing League and you want to this this 12 week series is full but we're gonna do some other big races and some other series so just keep your eye on our social channels and we'll let you know how to get involved with that. Mike Elliott, um, we do not rebuild ARS shocks. Um, they're 10 or 15 minutes from us, so they're they're close enough that they're not going to set us up as a rebuild center. Um, they're, they're very nice people over there at ARS, so you can uh, contact um, the Barths, uh, Adam or Bobby or Corey, and they can get your shock fixed up for you. We would love to do work for you, but that's not a shock we work on. We do um, our own brand, obviously, AFCO Pro, Penske um, are the main ones that, that we work on. So, Mark Ashcraft, um, on a high bank tracks, do we want stiffer springs than a mid bank track? Um, yes, and it's just because we're loading those right side tires so much harder um, with the banking that we need a stiffer spring rate to um, keep from over traveling the car and dragging the frame rail under the track. So, Mike, not a problem, not a problem at all. Um, we did rebuild ARS shocks when we very first started before we had our own brand, um, but we haven't in a number of years. So, We do offer a trade-in program in the fall. We're full on trades right now, but if you ever were wanting to trade those in for CSI shocks, keep an eye um, on Monday Morning Quarterback and our website. Um, come September, we will start our trade-in program again, and you can potentially trade those in towards a new set. So, Anybody else that's tuned in have questions here, Monday Morning Quarterback, episode 54. We thank you guys for tuning in. Again, thank you to everybody who shared our post. We'll be doing a drawing um, for 500 bucks off a set of CSI shocks, and we're going to do a bunch of other goodies too, some $50 gift cards and apparel, um, etc. So we certainly appreciate all that. All right, doesn't look like anybody else has any questions. Again, if you have a Monday morning quarterback topic that you would like us to cover, uh, shoot me a message, and I will be glad to uh, add that to the lineup coming up this summer. And we hope you guys all have a fantastic uh, week. John Randall Chalksticks special coming soon. Chalksticks are always on special at CSI. We dyno them for free. And if you order them on the web, they ship for free. Uh, John's probably referring to the announcement. I became a um, partner in Chalksticks and that was announced today. We've always worked with their torsion bars, love their product, and I'm happy to be um, working with them in a formal capacity. And uh, I know we have a lot of shared customers and I'm gonna help them with some product development and torsion bars go hand in hand with shock absorbers. So that's, that's a fun venture for us. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a fantastic week and hope to see you at a racetrack coming up soon. Take care.